Well, hey, everybody, I'm here outside a conference room where folks are starting to gather for a Twitter chat on whooping cough, the flu, and you. Uh, today's Twitter chat is going to be a kind of a joint venture between Mayo Clinic, the CDC, and NBC News. And uh, we're going to kind of go inside and talk to some, some of the Mayo folks involved and find out what this Twitter chat thing is all about. And the most news health stories in that ready to go. Each question will be able to have a chance to, to share your expertise with people. These, these Twitter chats are so effective because they allow our team to engage in real time using our physicians, media outlets, and most importantly, we get a lot of conversation with patients who ask questions and we respond to them and it's very engaging and we have uh, Recent Twitter chats have reached millions and millions of people. It's a team effort. We've got media relations, social media, we've got physicians. We're working with the CDC. We are working with um, NBC, Robert Bazell, and his producers as well. So we're all going to converge together. We put this all on, a, you can see tweetchat.com on the board there, where uh, we can all watch the tweets coming on the screen. Okay, the first question, why do so many people say they get sick after a flu shot? Why do so many people? It's been 30 years. So oh, start with Q1. Oh, okay, so, um, um, it's been 30 and then do YRS. Yeah. A Twitter chat is a great way to allow patients to ask questions. It's a great way to educate the public about a given condition. It's a great way to get doctors exposed to kind of, you know, relatively new medium and a, a different audience than they might reach through traditional newspaper or television station interviews. Most doctors are intrigued by the idea. Most of them also do not have Twitter accounts, have never tweeted, have never looked at Twitter. So we often walk them through setting up an account and showing them how to tweet. And then once they start, they enjoy it. They have a lot of fun they're interested in doing it again. We've had physicians from all different specialties in these chats. In this chat right here we said, here's a great video about whooping cough. So the link was already in there. We use a shortener called Bitly. But it's going to take us to a YouTube video that Vivian Williams did on our Mayo Clinic channel about whooping cough. So that's how we connect all the social media together through the Twitter chat. We did a post on advancing the science about the Twitter chat with NBC as it's going on, including a photo of everybody in the room. And this is on Mayo's science blog. And going down to the bottom, I'm going to retweet or tweet about the post on advancing the science, therefore killing many birds with one stone. When looking at the actual hashtag itself of NBC News Health, we promoted this earlier in the week. Um, as one of the uh, hashtags for people to follow to learn more about the, tra the, the chat. And what we're able to do is literally pull in real-time analytics and determine how many people are, are looking at this tag at any point. So what does it say for REACH? REACH is 2 million people at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Are we going with Q2 or 3? He's on Q2. So I'm retweeting you. But I'm slightly changing it so to make it fit. So, Randy, what's your medical expertise? Whooping cough or? Um, kind of, yeah, I think that is whooping cough and, and flu like symptoms. I'm an expert on all those. You can steer it however you want to. Oh, because you think I should get tested for precautions. <laughs> I'm not getting tested for precautions. And are you guys going to wrap it or do you want Robert to wrap? Well, Robert is a moderator, so yeah, he should wrap it. Okay, you got it. This was my first Twitter chat and I was very nervous coming in, but it ended up being fun and we sent out some sort of silly messages along the way. Okay. Okay, so in addition to very important clinical information. I think the biggest pressure was staying within that character limit um, and still giving out a message that made sense without lo sound looking too texty. Cool. Okay, so you feel, and you feel like you got some good messages out? I think we did, and between the three of us, I think we got a lot of good information out there. It, it was my first time, but uh, it was a quite uh, stimulating interaction, and uh, I never really experienced it. it it's a short in time window, you have to respond it, you know, at one. And second of all, you have to really stay on the focus, you know, I mean, it's the questions that keep coming up, and, you know, I don't know what, what question is right now I'm on. And also, you know, there's a lot of interactions happening 
happening at the same time. So, and you know, uh, really, I put this some in my uh, you know points out in a more in a contextual manner. So that was a, you know really challenging, but it was a fun. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it's a great way to meet meet and reach several million people at one quick time, giving them important and timely, real time information about vaccines. People asked really very good questions. They were very interested and concerned to get the right information and make good decisions. Uh, I, I tweet regularly about vaccines and about uh, leadership and motivation. So just go to at Dr. Greg Poland.